Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Uh, looks like the children already have their children's pockets, so they're, they're good to go. And then just, just a reminder, uh, we went for lunch, we went through 40 days of, of going through America's uh, favorite uh, Christian songs, which many of them were, were hymns. Um, if you didn't get a chance to see them, you can find them on our Facebook page. Uh, they're they're one-minute videos, and each day uh, throughout those 40 days, I went through uh, one song and just to look and explore uh, just the story behind each song. And so again, you don't have to have a Facebook account to see it. Um, just Google uh, FLC Willows. It's the same, same thing as our webpage. And you'll go ahead and find... Um, find not only our Facebook and our web page and our U YouTube channel, but, but also those, those videos. So I encourage you to look at that. Uh, and as for looking forward, we'll begin with a new Bible study on the book of James. And the book of James uh, really talks about uh, the way of Christian living. And in some ways, it's a contrast to the book of Romans. So if you, if you enjoy the book of Romans, this is almost the other side of the story for <laughs> Christian living. Again, that's uh, beginning this Wednesday at 10 a.m. And if you want to come in through a Zoom or, or a phone call of some kind, just because for whatever reason, um, just let me know, and I'll get that set up. Anything else before I get started? All right, well, let's go ahead and begin with our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, hymn number 457. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God, in rising of Jesus from the tomb, you have given us the sure sign of your power to deliver us from sin and death and to renew our whole creation. We confess that we still fall into doubt and fear. We continue to cling to selfish ways and doubt your power to make all things new. Forgive our lack of faith and have mercy on our weakness. Raise us from the death of sin that we may live with Christ in the joy of his resurrection now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through whom your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The people may be seated and the children may come forward for a children's lesson.
Well, good morning. Well, first off, I just want to start off with a question. Do you think I can use a dollar bill to put two paper clips together? Um, well, yeah? Okay, well, let's go ahead and, and see if I can. Maybe just put one paper clip at the top here and Another one at, on this one. And yeah. But some, everyone's got their own toys. And then I mean, just pull the dollar bill apart. And then, and then you can see what happened to the paper clips. They, they got clipped together. And so. Some people may have not known that that could happen, and they could be surprised. <laughs> Others can be surprised that they have an Easter egg in their hand. But uh, on uh, one Easter morning, there was uh, several followers of Jesus who uh, went to his tomb, and they were surprised he wasn't there. They were surprised because they knew that just a few days earlier, he had died on a cross, something kind of like this, but a whole lot bigger that uh, is about the size of a body. And then they placed him in a tomb, and then they put a rock over the tomb. Again, the rock was round and a whole lot bigger, <laughs> but they placed it over the tomb to, to lock Jesus' body in. But then a few days later, they saw that he wasn't there. And there were many followers wondering what had happened that day. And kind of like the, the dollar bill and the, and the paper clips. You might sit back and wonder, how does that work? How can a dollar bill put two paper clips together? And it, took, it did take them some time to figure it out. But then they realized that Jesus had rose again from the dead. And so... What they ended up figure, finding out was that this was to show us that if Jesus can overcome death, then when Jesus comes again, we too will rise again from the dead, just like Jesus did. So that is the story of Easter in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us Jesus. We thank you for rising him from the dead to show us that you are alive and you are powerful, and also that you love us so that we too can rise from the dead. All in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, now you may return to your seats as we continue with the Old Testament lesson. The Old Testament lesson today comes from Isaiah chapter 25, beginning at the sixth verse. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. 
The epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and then he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on that first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right gate, right side. And they were alarmed. Do not be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Together, we confess our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now continue with the hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Hymn number 461. You may be seated.
He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The three women in our gospel lesson were surprised when they heard this news. There were a lot of things that surprised them on this Easter Sunday morning where Jesus is resurrected from the grave. How do you all deal with surprises? Some love them, and some can't stand them. And it probably more so depends on if you have time for them. <coughs> if you're on a mission and you're not in the mood, then you might actually find them frustrating. The three women in our scripture are on a mission. Mary Magdalene, M Mary, the mother of James, and Salome. They bought spices to finish embalming Jesus. And they went as soon as they could. Two days earlier, on Friday, Jesus was quickly wrapped up and placed into a tomb. The next day was the Sabbath day. Saturday, a day of rest. Now these women on Sunday are eager to, to finish giving Jesus his proper burial. Now they must certainly have been in mourning. Jesus, the most amazing person they have ever met, has been crucified. They saw his execution just two days earlier. This man who gave life to others, who blessed even these three women, had been sentenced to die as a criminal by those who hated Jesus. To them, to those who hated Jesus, he was considered a joke. But for these women, Jesus was the best person that came into their life. He brought life to the people who were around him. When the sun had risen on this Sunday, the three women go to the tomb of Jesus. And they say to one another along the way, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? For they couldn't do it themselves. It was too large. But when they arrived, the stone has already been rolled away. The tomb of Jesus was already open. They enter into the tomb. They check out just to see what is going on. And they see a young man, probably an angel, a messenger from God. He's dressed in a white robe, covered in white. The women are alarmed. The man knows they are there. They are present, and he knows that they are alarmed. He knows they are worked up, and in their tension, the man speaks to them. He says, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. He was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he had told you. How would you respond to this message from this messenger? Would you also be alarmed? Or would you believe wholeheartedly this news that has just been given to you. Though you saw with your own eyes 
this man from God being executed, this messenger says he is now alive. Who rises from the grave? Maybe it just took a little time for all this to sink in. Maybe there's just too much information all at once. Who is this messenger? And when did Jesus rise from the grave? Where in Galilee might we find him? Is this messenger just trying to send us on a wild goose chase? As for these three women, after hearing the good news, they still seem to have the same emotion. They are trembling and astonished. This emotion captivates them. They leave in fear. They go out from the tomb in a hurry. They don't tell anyone. They don't tell anything to anyone. Can you relate to this emotion? Can you relate to being so overwhelmed and feeling like everything is just beyond your control? So much that you just don't know what to do. Gloria Gaither can. One of the Christian songs she wrote in 1971 became very popular in America. It's titled, Because He Lives. This song is based off of what was going on in her heart. What was going on in their heart just the year before? Life seemed rather tough. Her husband, Bill, had become physically weak after having an illness known as mono. From the first time in Bill's family, there was a divorce. His sister was going through an ugly divorce. And there were a lot of other circumstances in their family that just seemed out of control. During this time, Gloria was also pregnant with her third child. Outside of their home, there were also many things going on that were out of control. Several rights movements were in full force. Protesting and riots continued to fill the newspaper headlines. Also in the headlines, was the Vietnam, Vietnam War. This war just didn't seem to end. The thought of bringing another child into this world with all the craziness going on was taking a toll on her. Though they chose a career to sing songs about peace and joy, in their hearts they were carrying the opposite emotion. But then, there was a moment of peace in her heart. Gloria was reminded of the promise from Jesus. That is, is written in John 14, verse 9. Jesus says, because I live, you also will live. Gloria remembered that God is in control. And this gave her peace. That no matter what her little baby son was going to have to face, he would be safe 
in God's hands. And this comfort goes for any situation that anyone is in. God's promises of eternal life are certain. Even in this world that is full of uncertainty. From the comfort from God, Bill and Gloria wrote this song, Because He Lives. And here is the chorus. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth a living. Just because he lives. Where is your heart today? Are you feeling alarmed with everything going on? Or are you at peace, knowing that your life is secure in the eternal promises of Jesus Christ? Or are you somewhere in between? Like the woman in our scripture, that just don't yet understand how much peace that comes from our salvation in Jesus Christ. Again, what does our messenger from the Gospel of Mark say? Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. The messenger already knows that these women are looking for Jesus. Then he tells them the good news. Not only the good news that Jesus is risen, but that he is also the crucified one. This is the good news for not only that he's not in the grave anymore, but that he is the one we are to point to the crucified one. As the Apostle Paul says in his letter, as we heard in our epistle reading to the Corinthians, Jesus not only rose from the dead, as the scriptures had foretold, but he also died for our sins. As also the scriptures had foretold. By believing Jesus died for our sins, our lives are eternally safe in his name. This good news is not only for these three women on this one Easter morning. It's not only for the 12 disciples of Jesus. And it's not only for the Corinthian church. It's for all who believe in Jesus. It's for you, and it's for me. This good news of salvation in Jesus is for you and me. And we shall not perish, but have eternal life. And though you and I can get worked up in this life and worry about where our life will end up. Through Jesus Christ, we have hope. And through him, we have peace and joy in our lives. No matter what life brings us, because Jesus has victory over death. Though we believers still sin by our actions and thoughts that are not pleasing to God, by his grace and mercy, and by his generous love, he gives us Jesus. The Son of God, who is victorious over sin and death for us, 
so that we will live forever in God's eternal kingdom. So because Jesus, the crucified one, has risen, let us also tell others about this good news of Jesus Christ. Let others also have the blessing of being forgiven for their sin, so that the anxiety that this world may give us be replaced by the joy and peace that comes from Jesus Christ. And no matter how much our lives become disrupted, God's eternal and gracious plan of salvation will prevail. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we now collect our offering. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future. Send your son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. In
Let us pray for the whole church of God, in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, you raised your son Jesus from the dead. Fill all your people with joy of his victory, and send us forth as witnesses to his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, Lover of mankind, prosper your gospel wherever it is preached throughout the world, that it may give and sustain faith in all who hear it, delivering them from the power of darkness and bringing them into the joyful kingdom of your risen Son. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of glory, you as son, you, your Son established your church to be a refuge of peace in a troubled world. Rise up servants of your church in every place who will devote their lives to the spread of the gospel and the service of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. King of the nations, remember in your kindness all who bear authority in our land. Give them wisdom and integrity that they may serve our people according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Rock of our refuge, in every time of need, hear the prayers of those who call upon you in times of distress, especially those who are lonely, those who are sick, and those who are dying, and those who are mourning. We now especially pray for those who we now name silently in our hearts. May your son ever be for them, that their joy, that you turn their joy into sorrow, and that their sickness gets turned to health, and their life and death. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.